Hi everybody! Hope you're in good shape. Well, in today's lesson, you learn about model verbs, how to use them properly, and how to avoid mistakes while using these special helping verbs. Model verbs are auxiliary verbs, just like be, do, and have, because they work together with the main verb. And model verbs are can, could, shall, should, may, might, will, would, must, have to, ought to, and need. There are three rules you have to follow to use those models effectively. First of all, make sure to use model verbs as they are. That means don't change them in the tenses, the present, the past, or the future. For example, we say, he can swim, not he can swim or she can swim. The second rule is that you always have a model verb with a main verb. And the main verb that follows is always in the bare infinitive form without to, such as, I could go, not I could to go, or she would like, not she would to like. And the last rule is that model verbs are auxiliary verbs, as I mentioned before. That means you make negative by adding not after the model. Don't add any extra words like don't, doesn't, aren't, isn't, or won't. Use just not. For example, can, can't, should, shouldn't, would, wouldn't, and so on. But there is only one exception with the model verb have to. And here we can say you don't have to do this. Actually, model verbs can express many basic concepts in any situation. They are used to express obligation, to give advice, to talk about possibility and probability, or to ask for permission, and more. Now, let's look at the functions of each model verb. And we start with the model verb can. Can expresses two functions. The first one is the ability. For example, I can speak three languages, or I can swim. And the second function is that can expresses permission or request. For example, can I go out? Can he enter the lab? Now we move to the next model, which is could. Could actually has the same function as can. There is only a slight difference between the two is that can is in the present, but could is in the past. So, in the past, I could speak three languages, or I could swim. Well, expresses permission, request, prediction, and promise, as we saw before. For example, will you let me go out? Will you go out with me? I think it will rain tomorrow. Or, I will marry you when we express promise. The first function of would is that it works as the past simple of will. For instance, I thought it would rain tomorrow. Secondly, would expresses invitation. For example, would you come to the party? Next, would is more polite than will. For instance, imagine you're in a restaurant and the waiter comes and asks you, what would you like to eat? Here, this would shows politeness. Shall is used to indicate future actions or suggestions. It is usually used with the pronouns I or we, such as, shall I order a taxi? Or, shall we begin the game now? While should is used for giving advice. For example, you should eat healthy food, or you shouldn't stay late at night. Here, both examples indicate advice. May is used to express possibility or request. For instance, it may rain tomorrow, meaning that it, it is possible to rain tomorrow. For request, it works as the model can. They are similar in this case. So we say, May I go out with my friends? Yes, you may for a positive answer, or no, you may not for a negative answer. Might 
has the same function as may. That means we can use it to talk about possibility of request. But there are two differences. The difference number one is that we can't use might for permission. For example, we don't say, might I go out with my friends? No, we cannot say it. The difference number two is that we consider might as the past simple of may, such as, he asks if he might go out with his friends. And as you can see here, this sentence is in the past simple. Now the model verb must. Must can be used to express obligation. For instance, you must respect your parents or Muslims must pray five times a day. On the other hand, we've got mustn't. Mustn't is the negative form of must. Its function is prohibition. For example, you mustn't smoke in the hospital or you mustn't touch the exhibits in the museum. That means you're not allowed to smoke nor to touch. And a small observation about pronouncing mustn't. Here, we don't utter T. We pronounce it as mustn't, not mustn't. Have to or need to are used to express necessity. For example, I have to be there on time or I need to be there on time. That is, it's necessary for me to be punctual and arrive on time. Don't have to or don't need to are the negative forms of have to and need to and they indicate lack of necessity. For instance, it's holiday. I don't have to wake up early or it's sunny outside, you don't need to wear a jacket. Now guys, what you have to remember is that model verbs don't have tenses. We don't say he cans or she mays. Next, we don't use to with model verbs. We don't say he can to eat or it may to rain. And finally, we don't use don't, doesn't, aren't, isn't with model verbs. We don't say he doesn't can drive, no. We automatically say he can't drive. Now let's practice. Fill in the gaps with the correct model verbs from the list. Pause the video so that you can have time to do this exercise. When you're ready, click play again to check your answers. Now let's correct. 1. Laura can't swim. She's afraid of the water. 2. Mary couldn't read when she was 3. She was too young. 3. Mark can help you move the furniture. He's very strong. 4. Could you play the guitar when you were 8? 5. We must throw all the garbage in the bins. 6. Students mustn't eat food in the classroom. 7. You look pale. You should visit a doctor. 8. May I go to the park, mom? And for more practice, you go to pages 62 and 63 in the student's book and page 31 in the workbook. That's it for today, guys. Good luck and see you in a new video.